And um, so again, I'll just let me start by saying welcome. I am going to record this, so just so you know. And I am going to ask at a couple points just for your feedback and your participation. You can use the chat feature or you can unmute yourself. Pretty sure I've got everybody on mute right now. So you're able to do that. But let's do this before we kind of dive into the details. Um, let's talk about taking a pause. And a simple really quick pause is all you really need to get started with this stuff and um, you know i'm going to show you each class will start with a pause but you'll also be a full meditation in each class and i'm also going to show you some informal exercises this might be considered an informal exercise and when will we do that well, we'll do that right now so i would say sit comfortably in your chair it doesn't really matter this the informal practices are meant to be kind of done on the go in a sense um, as you're moving throughout your day but just pause for a second and turn inward and if it helps to close your eyes you can do that but you don't have to and just simply notice as you pause and you look inward just be aware perhaps first of your body sitting here just be aware of your feet on the floor and your seat in the chair and how your back is and your arms and hands and the position of your posture and your head just notice all of that and then just maybe notice your breathing and if you want to take one nice deep breath just take a deep breath and let it out long and slow, allowing the body to relax and to sink in a little bit as you arrive right here and now, through the breath and through the body. And just finally remember to be kind to yourself. Um, as you'll hear, an important attitude, an important ingredient to all this is to be kind to yourself. So there's no right or wrong way of doing this. All right, and that's a pause. So you can open your eyes. And uh, again, that's really just one example of a quick way that you can pause. Um, you may be hearing some uh, siren coming by. That's going to happen. I'm right outside the emergency department. So um, just part of, part of mindfulness is paying attention to sounds um, without kind of attaching any particular meaning to them, but we'll get into that later. So <laughs> there'll be a variety of sounds. Hopefully you can all hear me and see me okay, and you can see the slide that I have up. If you are for some reason not able to see the slides and you're on a phone or something of that nature and you can't see the slides, don't worry about that. As I said, we'll send them out afterwards. So that's a mindful pause. And I've talked a little bit about how the program is going to work. You're gonna get that email after class with, with the slides. And I'm actually also going to include a couple of handouts. Um, it's a little top heavy in the beginning. I have a bunch of stuff for you to, to read and pay attention to, depending on if you've ever done this before. I kind of want to give you some good background. And you know, 45 minutes really goes pretty quick. So um, can't give it to you all in during the class, but I'm going to give you some readings and some videos to do as well. And um, I'll reinforce the message that I gave you uh, before. In the, that was that um, uh, got a couple of stray noises there. Um, that is really just kind of do the best you can. We're not doing this to become Olympic meditators or to be the best at breathing or anything like that. We're doing this just to kind of relax and give, our, give ourselves a break. And in a minute, I'm gonna ask you a couple of, you know, why are you doing it? So you might wanna be thinking about that. But remember, this is not about being perfect. It's about just making progress in your meditation practice, and finding a way to integrate that into your life. Um, and that it is a complex skill and that it takes a little bit of time. It takes some practice to build uh, a healthy practice, the same as it takes practice to learn an instrument or a language or a sport like surfing or tennis or self-defense or something like that. So 
you really do need to do some practice in between. That's probably the most important thing that I'll ask you to do. If you don't have time for a reading or a video that I send out, at least try to do the practice and you'll see what I'm going to be asking you to do. All right, so I'm going to start with a definition. Let's see if there was. Just checking on that chat there. So John Kabat-Zinn is a well-known American meditation instructor who developed mindfulness-based stress reduction, which is actually a course that was originally developed in healthcare with uh, people with chronic illness. And um, so his definition is this, and we can break it down. So paying attention really means increasing our awareness and our concentration and our focus. You know how it's so easy to be distracted these days, you know, with our phones and everything at work and what's going on in our families. And there's internal chatter, but there's also external noise. So it's very easy to be distracted. This is a great way to really hone your awareness and increase the focus. We do it on purpose, which really means the same thing as I said before with the pause. We have to be, uh, have an intention to set aside some time to do this and to make this work for you, to fit it in. And the whole thing is about bringing ourselves to the present moment, right here, right now, not ruminating about the past or projecting into the future, which we so often do when our minds go on autopilot. It's about coming back time and time again to this moment right now. You may have even noticed in the time that I've been talking, perhaps your mind has been distracted by several different things, and that's okay. Uh, but it's just to notice that, and then to bring yourself back to the sound of my voice, for example, right now. Or you're gonna see, bring yourself back to you know, the rhythm of your breathing, or to the feeling of your body in the chair. It's those kinds of things that will bring us back to the present moment. And we try to do this in a non-judgmental way. And, and when we start to pay attention to this inner world in a sense, we realize that we have so many labels and opinions about things. We label them right or wrong, good or bad. Sometimes they're neutral, but often we're making these evaluations. It's just the natural way that our mind works. And what we're really trying to cultivate is this sense of not judging the moment automatically, the way that our conditioned patterns have taught us to, but in just meeting the moment as it is in its purest form. Um, and that's really kind of the, uh, one of the essential arts of this. So um, you'll see how that kind of plays out. Another definition by Dan Harris, uh, author of these two books, 10% Happier and Meditation for Fidgety Skeptics, both very good books. Mindfulness is the ability to know what's happening in your head at any given moment without getting carried away by it. And you'll notice that sometimes we get hijacked, you know, our attention <laughs> gets hijacked by a thought train or getting lost in thought or an emotion or a body sensation or whatever it is. And it's easy to get carried away. So mindfulness is the ability to kind of step back from that and be able to, be, to witness it in a sense and not get carried away. We also include this, we include sort of a presence of heart uh, and we kind of combine it, it becomes mindfulness, right? And you'll see how that plays out as well. So why meditate? And I'm gonna ask you, why did you join this course? And you can, as I'm talking, feel free to put into the chat feature one or two words and I'll give you some suggestions here too. But when you heard about this course, what was it that that you thought maybe you could learn from this. Um, you know, it can be very relaxing. A lot, of, a lot of us do it for relaxation, but it's really more about being awake and alert in the moment, not about relaxing and falling asleep. And the weather analogy is we open the door to see the weather outside with meditation. We really look inside to see what's going on, what particular storms or you know, maybe it's what, what the weather patterns are inside. So what's your intention? Might be number one of these, you know, resetting, refreshing, stepping back from stress. A lot of us are under 
tremendous amounts of stress these days. Um, just that you've heard that it's good for your mind and you'd like to know more about that. Or maybe it's this balance of being relaxed but attentive at the same time. Here's some other kind of words to kind of just reflect on. I'll go to the chat in a moment. I see a number of you have put things in. So continue to put, if you haven't, put a word or two in about what, um, what it is that you're looking to gain. But these are just some of the benefits. I'm not going to cite any research in this class. If you want research, I can direct you to some of that. Uh, there has been an explosion of research on mindfulness practices uh, with very, very many positive benefits um, in, in lots of different settings uh, out there in the world. So, uh, you know, as you can see, these are, these are a lot of them. All right, so just going to the chat, let's see. Quieting the mind, yes, to better handle stress, and to be more present, stress management, stress techniques, Coping with uncertainty, yes, I'm glad you said that. There's a lot of uncertainty with COVID, the stressing. So a lot of you have mentioned stress, less self-induced stress. Ah, I like that, yes, exactly. We do tend to add stress <laughs> onto ourselves. Uh, better address difficult situations, overwhelming work environment, tools to help with that. Uh, clear the mind, be a better listener. Yes, exactly. You're going to see how it's going to help you be more present to other people as well. Um, stress and anxiety with work and school. I've heard about benefits. Never able to get into it. Hopefully, you'll, you'll, I'll show you some ways to really get into this as we go through. To get a lot of resetting self, a lot of stress, balancing your day. Self-care is a habit, very good. Self-awareness, self-regulation, reduce stress and anxiety. So a lot of similarities, you see. And uh, being told my voice cuts in and out at times. So let me know if that goes on. Hopefully you can hear me. Maybe if I get a little closer to stay close. Um, hopefully you can hear me okay. Anybody having any trouble hearing me at all? No. Of I came into the office today so that you could hear me better. Yeah, it's just sometimes it gets lower as you're finishing a sentence, bud. Okay. All right, good. The lower, yeah. All right. I'll try to just keep up the volume, okay? If you have a question or clarification, just let me know as we go on. So, as you can see, a lot of this really depends on what we intend to do, not just overall for this class, but also for each individual meditation, each time you become mindfully aware, what is it that you intend for yourself right in that moment? So you'll see how that works for you as well. All right, uh, we have a lot of videos. I'm only gonna show one, I'm gonna, hopefully this works. Um, let me do one thing before. something off there and I'm going to try this so let's into this video this is a video it's like two minutes and um, it's narrated by Dan Harris who is the ABC news anchor who's written books and is getting an unexpected air I may show you this at the end if I have time um, it's a quick video which really just shows some of the basic easy practices uh, to do this and the reasons for doing this, some of which I've mentioned already. Um, but you're gonna get these links, so um, afterwards you can always watch any of these videos as well. Uh, the mindfulness is not a crystal ball is a good one in the sense that it talks about, how, you know how um, if you have one of those snow globes and you shake it up, um, that's kind of how our mind is, you know, with all sorts of thoughts and, and snow flurries, things going on uh, in our minds. Well, mindfulness is simply just taking a few moments to slow down and to let all of those things just settle down to the bottom. They don't go away, but they just settle down and we're able to see a little bit more clearly because we've allowed our minds to, to, to settle and to, and to um, to not be clouded by all the various thoughts and emotions that are going on 
in any one particular moment. All right, so um, if we look at this funny little cartoon, we're gonna go into it, the first meditation. And um, so you'll see even in this, with all the thought bubbles here, lots of thoughts are going on at all times. And that's really what our minds do. They generate thoughts, much like other organs of our body generate you know, hormones, for example, or enzymes. But that's what our brain does. We, it's estimated that we have something like 50,000 thoughts a day, if you can believe that. And many of them are repetitive day after day, repetitive thought patterns. So we're going to actually see more of that as we get into the third week, which talks about thoughts and emotions. But for today, when we go into the meditation, you might just notice that there are thoughts going on. And we're not trying to stop our thinking. We're not trying to empty our mind. We're being aware of those thoughts and we're gonna let go of them and come back to the anchor of our breath. Okay, so you'll see how that works. Let me also say something about your sitting posture. So you can sit any way you like. Most of us will probably be sitting in a chair, but if you wanna sit on the floor uh, cross-legged in a lotus position, for example, you can try that. Um, you could try some of these meditations lying down, the body scan next week, for example. Um, great way to fall asleep, but I really don't want you to fall asleep right now, but if you do, that's okay too. But for now, I would say just sit in a chair and sit in a position that's relatively upright so that your back is uh, straight, but not rigid. You want to be comfortable. So try to find a, a position that's balanced between being relaxed but alert, okay? Now, let's actually begin the meditation. So finding that position, taking a moment to settle yourself into that position and feel free to adjust. You might wanna have your feet flat on the floor so that you can feel the contact of your feet on the floor. You may close your eyes if you like, you don't have to though, you can always keep them slightly open with a downward gaze unfocused in front of you. You might experiment with either, you know, but either you wanna be able to turn inward, that's the point. And we'll begin by bringing your awareness into the body and feel the chair beneath you. Feel the touch points as the chair supports you. Feel where your hands and arms are resting comfortably and effortlessly. Again, feel the feet on the floor and really notice that touch, that sense of connection that your feet make with the floor. All right, so that's first step into arriving into the present through the body. The body is always present. Next step is we're going to focus on the breath. So we'll start by taking three nice, full, deep breaths. You can breathe in through the nose, nice and deep. And you can breathe out through the nose or the mouth and make that exhale long and slow, letting all the air out of the nose. And then breathe in deep again. Feel that fresh oxygen coming in, filling the lungs. Breathe out long and slow, letting the body relax and release as you do so. One last time, nice deep breath. Feel that sense of rising and expansion. And as you breathe out, let your shoulders drop and relax. Let the muscles in your face relax. And just allow the whole body to release some tension and to soften and relax. And then just let your breath be natural and easy. You don't have to do anything special with the breath right now. Just breathe. Let the breath breathe itself. And give yourself permission to Relax and enjoy the experience. 
letting go of any particular expectations, just letting it happen, breath by breath, moment by moment. And feeling the breath, feeling the sensations of each breath. You can feel it at the nostrils as the air goes in and out. You can even notice it's a little cooler on the way in, a little warmer on the way out. You can feel it at the back of the throat as the breath travels down to the lungs and the lungs expand and the ribs expand and the chest rises a little bit and then contracts. And you might feel it also at the belly, the slight stretch, relaxing of the belly as you breathe. Nice and full and slow and easy. Wherever you feel the breath the most directly, just let your attention settle there. Feel this one breath. And then this breath. And stay with the breath as best you can so that the breath becomes an anchor to the present moment. However, when you notice that your attention has wandered, and that will happen, as I said, just notice that, be aware of that. You can let go of whatever, whatever it was, a thought or a to-do list or a, an opinion about this exercise or whatever it is. Just let it go and bring your attention gently and non-judgmentally back to the next breath. And stay on the breath as best you can. And you may even notice judgments that you might make. Judgments about, oh, I can't make, can't stay focused on the breath. It's okay. Remember, we're not trying to do this perfectly. We're just trying to to go along with the exercise. You might have judgments about all sorts of things, about the position of your body, about the sound of my voice, about whatever it might be. Just notice those, let them go, come back to the next breath. So that we try to adopt an attitude of discovery, being curious, being friendly, not trying to get anywhere special. We're just allowing ourselves to be here through the breath so that the breath becomes a home base in a sense or a gateway to the present moment. Just feeling this one breath, breathing in, breathing out. If you like, you can even use words mentally to yourself, like calm on the in-breath, ease on the out-breath. Noticing that siren, that siren. Just letting it wash through you. Feeling the next breath in and out. No place to go, nothing to do. Nobody's asking anything of you in this moment, right now. So just rest on the waves of your breathing. And just notice what it feels like to be still and quiet for a few moments to take a break from the busyness of the day, to not do anything, but to just be. Just notice what that feels like in your mind and in your body and in your heart. And before we close, maybe making an intention to bring forth through the rest of the day this quality of awareness 
perhaps returning to it through the breath as you go about your day. Making that intention. And now we're going to slowly finish the exercise. And so first, bring your awareness back into the body and notice your body in the chair again, your feet on the floor. And slowly, gradually open the eyes as we come back to our surroundings. Finish the meditation. And you might want to move a little bit. You might want to stretch a little bit. And again, just kind of notice what your awareness is like right now. It's probably, probably different than when you entered the class or when you entered the meditation. Just notice. And if you'd like, as I'm talking, put a word or two into the chat feature again about what that was like for you, what the exercise was like, how you feel. Now, I mentioned there's no right or wrong. Um, so you might have gotten sleepy. You might have fallen asleep. That's okay. Uh, most of us do not get enough sleep. So closing our eyes in the middle of the day and really letting the brain settle down and be quiet is one way to fall asleep. So that's okay. Maybe you were able to let go enough so that you really could um, be quiet and still and sleepful and relaxed. Uh, maybe your mind was really busy. And that's kind of the other end of the spectrum. And if that's the case, that's okay too. Please do not get discouraged by that. You know, you're in the middle of the workday and it's, things are busy and you're trying to get things done. So it may not be that easy to slow the mind down. Take some practice. You know, it takes some time to do this. So some of the comments. Release, calming, calming, calming. Lots of calming, at ease. Relax me, mini vacation, nice to take a break. Calm, settling, peaceful and relaxed. Calm, humbling, restful and calming, relaxing and peaceful, calming. So um, lots of similar kinds of reactions to that. So good. So as I said, though, it's not all about just being calm and relaxed. So not as someone says, not as calming that I hoped, because I am still at work, but I know that with time I will get better. You know, that's really a good point. You know, wherever you are, you might be at work and it's harder to relax. Um, so as you do this, I'm going to be asking you to do this once a day at least, you might notice where is a good place for you to do this? Is it first thing in the morning? Is it midday? Is it later in the day? Experiment with different times and places so that you can find a place to do this, whether it's a private space or not, um, you might need to find the best, you know, a place that works for you. I've heard of some people going into their cars to do it, or into the bathroom to do it, or into some nice quiet place out in nature. Lots of possibilities. So try to experiment with this. And again, don't be hard on yourself. Just do what works for you. And that's really the whole point of this. Um, I am going to give you a record form, kind of like a log sheet. And when you do a meditation, I want you to just jot down a word or two. What was it like for you, just like you did here? But also maybe a comment about that. It worked well in this setting, or it didn't, or there was a lot of distractions, and I found myself, you know, being being distracted. Whatever it was, you know, that'll kind of give you some feedback for yourself on how to do this. When you get the slides, you're going to see this link here, the breathing and sitting meditation. That takes you right to the EFR website. EFR is Employee and Family Resources Program. And there's a whole page, and you'll see when you get to it, there's over 20 different meditations. But the first one is the, the um, breathing and sitting meditation. And that's the one that I'm going to ask you to do during this week. Once a day, if you can, or you can take one day off. So. Um, so here's a little mini lesson about all this. What we're doing is we're trying to come off of autopilot. And autopilot is this here. You can sort of see it in this little cartoon. Autopilot is when, even though we might be walking out in nature, but our mind is full of our concerns and stresses and worries and bills and you know all the stuff going in our families at work. And it's very, very, 
clouded. And autopilot is a natural thing for the mind to, to occur. It's just sort of the default mode of being. With this mindful practice, we can learn to let the mind settle down and be more like the dog and to let just to see clearly what's happening in the present moment rather than let all those things on autopilot cloud our vision. So we try to move from that doing mode into the being mode and just be present and just to notice what's right here and now. Now there are, there are attitudes that will really be helpful. Um, as I mentioned in the practice, one attitude is just to be open to kind of discover what's here and now as you do these practices, not to prove anything, not to even try to improve yourself. Um, and then you'll see this is a link to uh, a nice video by John Kabat-Zinn on the nine attitudes. And one that's very, very helpful is beginner's mind. And all beginner's mind really is, it's approaching this moment as if for the first time. And you'll see how that can apply to all different sorts of things. And I'm gonna show you some of the informal activities that we're gonna do on a regular basis. And that is really nice to bring beginner's mind to that. All right, so that's the cartoon. Um, so the daily practices for the class are, I'm gonna ask you to do a formal practice. Um, daily, and that's where I had said, you know, try to set aside 15 to 20 minutes. Now the practice itself really can, can be as little as two minutes, although a standard meditation might be five to 10 minutes. The sitting meditation link, I think, is about eight or nine minutes. Um, the meditation we just did, I didn't time it, but I think that was probably about seven or eight minutes. Um, so try to find a time and a place for you to do this formal practice once a day. Okay. And as I said, experiment with different times, different places, see what works for you. It's not going to be easy. This is the most challenging part. And, but the more you can get a good start on this in the beginning, um, it will be helpful if you can try to carve out the time and the place to do this. If you've got a lot of family responsibilities or busy at work and don't have a lot of private place, to do this, you know, it's gonna be a little bit harder, but see what you can do to find out what works for you, okay? Now, to supplement that, we have everyday informal mindfulness. The stop is actually an exercise, but for right now, just kind of think of just stopping and taking a purposeful pause at various times during, during the day. Ways to do this are things like washing your hands or any of these routine activities. We do these all day long, every day. So when you do this, just pay attention to the actual act of washing your hands. Don't let the mind go off, it will go off on autopilot, but just pay attention to the sensations of it, the sound of the water, the feel of the water, the temperature, the soap, the smell of the soap, what it's like to lather up and just really the, the movement of your hands. It's really quite complex and seeing it with that beginner's mind as if you're doing it for the first time so that you're paying attention to what you're doing while you're doing it. Now the mind's going to go off on its own and you're going to be distracted so when it does just bring your attention back to the hand washing and maybe try something different every day maybe brushing your teeth one day or doing the dishes or the laundry or there's lots of things at work I'll show you some things at work that you the three breaths for a pause, another, another informal practice, very simply taking a deep breath, noticing the breath, the mind itself, taking a breath, noticing the body, taking a breath, noticing your heart, or in other words, being kind to yourself. You can also do mindful eating. This is a link. When you get the slides, this will be an active link to a two minute exercise to mindfully eat a piece of chocolate. So get a piece of chocolate and try this. Again, it's taking that chocolate and eating it with that beginner's mind. Here are some pauses at work that you can just notice. You know, there's all kinds of little pauses and transitions during the work day that you can do to remind yourself. And that's the trick. What are you going to do to remind yourself? Maybe you put up a post-it on your mirror or something or some sort of reminder on your phone or your watch or whatever it is. 
but find some way to remind yourself to do the pauses, the informal pauses, but again, once a day at least to try to do the formal exercise. And again, the idea is that we want to try to see clearly in the moment if we can. And this is, by the way, from Sharon Salzberg. She's another well-known meditation instructor. If you want to, want to look into some of her stuff a little more fully, she's got some, she's got a great website and a couple of good books. So there's a lot of great uh, resources out there. But I do want to bring up this idea of being kind to yourself. It's such an important attitude. And they found that the attitude of friendliness, particularly friendliness to yourself, is one of the key factors that help someone learn to accept the, the challenges of a very simple practice, but trying to find it to do it on a daily basis. So if you find yourself saying, you know, the inner critic comes down and saying, I'm not good at this, or I'm having a really hard time, or I'm struggling, that's okay. You're probably going to struggle a little bit. Just notice that. Be kind to yourself. Approach it with a friendly attitude, and you're going to find that it's, you'll have a much easier way in trying to bring these practices into your life. All right, so um, here is really the kind of the homework in a sense. Um, I want you to think about this whole course is about building a practice of your own. And so if you do these things day by day for six weeks, that's a lot of time of getting practice with a formal meditation. Each week is gonna be different. This week is the sitting meditation. There again is that link to our website. That'll take you there. Now you can use other resources as well. If you have an app, there's a lot of great apps. I'll, I'll show you a couple of those in a minute. And then the informal practice. Try to do some time to, take, to do the informal practices. That, those are important as well. Each week, there's going to be some readings. If you have time, they're pretty quick. They're not like difficult or deep reading. Uh, these are really both very good readings. The Seven Myths of Meditation by Deepak Chopra. And Meditation, It's Not What You Think, kind of tongue in cheek, by John Kabat-Zinn. Both very good articles, and I would encourage you to read those if you have time. A couple of good videos. There's three of them, so that's a lot, I know. If you only have time for one, just pick one and just watch that, they're all, they're all good. But the point is, by taking the class, I think you're making a commitment to yourself. Now, that's hard sometimes, so you might find a buddy to do this with, a buddy that you know of who's taking the class or someone that you, that you work with or someone in your family. Maybe find a buddy and tell them that you're going to be trying to do this on a daily basis. Maybe they'll do it along with you. That can make it uh, a lot easier. So um, I do want to mention uh, the log sheet again. I'll show you that in a second. But when I send the slides out after the class, you're going to have the slides, you're going to have the log sheet, and you're going to have a couple more readings. As I said, up, up front, there's a lot kind of to digest. So just, just take in what you can. Uh, the website does have our meditations, that link you know, I've already showed you. You can use an app, Insight Timer is a very good one, uh, or the 10% Happier app, but there's lots of them. Um, Insight Timer is free, although you can pay for a kind of increased level, but they have something like 50,000 free meditations on it, so that's why I recommend that one. 10% Happier is one that gives you, I think, seven days of free meditations and you can join. And I believe they have a free membership for healthcare workers, which we would all qualify for. Uh, but that's also a very good app. And there's lots of other good ones. I have put a lot of my previous classes on YouTube. So this is an active link to YouTube, which you will see any of the classes. If this recording comes out, okay, I'll upload that there and you can watch this at another time or if you've missed the class, you can watch it there as well. And then we have these phone meditations. So um, every day, Monday through Friday, you can call in. These are live meditations, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at noon, Tuesdays and Thursdays at two. They're about 10 minutes. Here's the number and the access code. 
and just you just listen. That's a great way to get your practice in. Or if those times do not work for you, you can call this number, the 688-6185, and that's a pre-recorded line with three different meditations. So you have lots of sources to get the meditations from. So let me just stop talking. We're almost at the end. Any questions at all? Any thoughts, comments about what I've talked to? There's a lot of information. Any questions at all? As they put up this quote. Put it in the chat. You can unmute yourself. Anybody understand basically what I'm asking you to do? But I had a question. Yes. Um, for the hearing part of meditation, the distraction from noises, do right. you ever at the beginning use headphones? Can't noise can't headphones. Can you say it again? You're a little bit on the low side. It might be my volume here. Is this oh. Speak up a little bit. Do you ever what? Do you ever uh, recommend the use of like a noise canceling headphones to d limit the hearing distraction? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you could certainly try that if that helps in the beginning. Um, you could, some people like a little, you know, kind of uh, spacey music in the beginning. Um, you can um, just try to find a really nice quiet place. Yeah. And you can, um, yeah, actually, you know, that's not a bad idea at all. It's much like closing the eyes to limit the visual stimulation. So you could yeah. certainly try that. Right. Once we get into this in week two and three and four, we'll actually we'll allow sounds to be there and come in so that sounds become um, even a, an anchor and a way of returning to sounds that are in the background. But in the beginning, yeah, it, it, it may help to do that. Good question. Any other questions? All right, well, it is 1245 and um, you can certainly uh, reach out to me by email or phone if you have a question going forward. I see a few chats in here, so thanks. Good, good, very good. Yeah, like we said, I like to try the walking meditation. So the walking meditation will actually introduce next week. So that will be there. And um, as you read this quote, mindfulness is about being fully awake in our lives. It's about perceiving the exquisite vividness of each moment. We also gain immediate access to our own powerful inner resources for insight, transformation, and healing. And that's the last point I'll make is that this practice, that the type of meditation that I teach is really sort of, is called insight meditation. Part of it is you'll learn that you're really gaining insights into your own thoughts and emotions and how you're kind of relating to stress and the world around you. So great. So thanks, everybody. Thanks for being with me. I really appreciate your mindful presence. I'll be sending out the slides a little bit later. If you have any questions or comments, again, let me know. I hope you found the first class helpful. If you weren't sure about continuing, I hope you will continue, but do let me know if you have any questions. Um, Thank you. Continue.